The Book of Life. Okay, guys, we're beginning a new series, obviously called The Book of Life. Uh, title of this video is Intro and Parallels. Okay, and, and what we want to do is show you the concept of parallelism. Parallelism, okay, I don't even know if that's a word. But basically how we can see things in the book of Revelation, in the beginning of the book, things at the end of the book, we compare those and line them up and it begins to paint a full picture of um, a certain concept. In this example, the book of life. So we're going to learn about the book of life as an intro in this video by parallels. Revelation chapter 1 with Revelation chapter 22, which is the last book. So we're basically uh, taking Revelation 1, which we have here, and the last book of Revelation is Revelation 22, which is here. We're taking those and we're looking at the concepts of the book of Revelation, the imagery of the throne, the imagery of the book, the rim imagery of certain expressions, those written, um, those blessed, the throne, okay? Finding those in Revelation 22 and 20, and thus also in Revelation chapter 1, allowing us to get understanding and fill in the gaps of what the prophecy is talking about. Now, this channel is all about the book of Revelation, the apocalypse is the revealing. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. That's Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, the very beginning of the book. That's what this whole channel is about. And we don't form conclusions based on the apostate Babylon church. Babylon church says, okay, go to church, pray this prayer, cry, come to church, sing the songs, give your tithe, and your name isn't written in the book of life. Well, 95% of those that taught that have taken the mark of the beast. So they cannot be trusted, nor their doctrines, especially related to the book of life. All right. So in this, we're going to get into it, only what the scriptures say. That's all that's on the notes is the scriptures. We have to do studies into Hebrew and into Greek to do word studies to understand the prophecy. It's just a requirement. It's just totally necessary uh, to understand the things we'll get to in this series. So um, it's very important in our introduction here, all right, that you understand there's a procedural thing happening throughout the book of Revelation. There is judgment seats, okay? Judgment seats, and whenever the, there's scenes around the throne, there are books, there are things uh, being expressed. So we felt it necessary to start uh, this series because we saw the angel of the covenant, he had the tablet in his hand. Okay, now when he had the tablet in his hand, it's also the little book. Now it's, and it's a, it's a little book in proportion because he's holding it in one hand, but he has one hand on the earth, he has other hand on the, um, he has one foot on the earth, other foot on the sea, and thus we conclude he's high up in the sky, you know, uh, and he's very tall, so that the book is actually not uh, a small book to us. <laughs> It's going to be very large. It's going to be big as a house because it's in his hand, but he's way up in the sky. All right. So when we see him standing, all right, or when we see him with this, this tablet, it's expressing the book of life. All right. So that's a little book in his hand. Now, the procedures of the throne are actually beginning in Revelation 1. But we have another major scene in Revelation 5, where we see the scroll or the book in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, and no one was worthy to look on the book, to look at the scroll, to read therein, okay? And John wept much because no one was worthy to look at the book and to open the seal. And the 24 elders said, Weep not, uh, John, for the Lion of the tribe of Judah has overcome. Okay, he has prevailed to open the seals, to look at the book, and to open the seals therein, okay? So only the lamb is really worthy to know what the book says and to see the names written, okay? Many people will do many things to try to convince you they're saved, they're on the book of life, and you know, they'll extend more energy in trying to convince you than to actually repenting from their sins and standing right 
when the judgment day will come. They'll do all kinds of things saying, no, God won't judge. And, you know, no, no, no. But the judgment seat of Christ, okay, happens throughout the whole book. And the judgments are continuing and proceeding and escalating, okay, to get people to repent. All right. And that's this message as well, to repent. Do not assume your name is on the book of life. This message is not about you, about me convincing you um, of your, you know, eternity. I'm just reading what the book says, okay? And felt it necessary. We get into this uh, series. We have uh, essentially four pages of notes. We have a fifth page, which is going to illustrate uh, some of the symbolism of the heavenly scroll. Um, and so we'll at least have four parts to this series and what I'll do is post this somehow on the website and you can actually get ahead because the notes are already done. I'll post the notes in a PDF file. Um, and, you know, you can get ahead. And then as we continue and progress, we'll have videos to accompany the additional pages of the notes and titles in the series. So Book of Life. In this uh, intro, as we said, we're talking about the throne and we're talking about how when the throne settings take place, books are opened, okay? And at times, names are written or names are read, okay, at various points and stages throughout the book of Revelation. And then we conclude in the book of Revelation that all of those, okay, in New Jerusalem have their names in the book of life, all right? But um, we'll... The other deep part of the series is that there's actually three scrolls. There's three separate parts to the book of life, which we're not getting into in this video. We're just getting into the parallelisms, okay? But we will be able to explain to you there is a distinction of the four people groups, as we've taught uh, many times in the channel. Man-child, 144,000, great multitude, also expressed through the book of life. All right, now in this one, we're going to take the parallels and we're going to see, okay, how Revelation chapter one is going to show us the book of life. All right, guys, here you can see our notes and um, our notes for this uh, video are here, book of life intro and parallels. And as we go out through the series, we want to show you how the throne and the book of life is also expressed um, in other places. So we're principally going to focus today on Revelation 1, but we also want you to be aware of this because you do see the throne, okay, being expressed through Revelation chapter 4, 5, and in 6, um, we see the throne of the Lamb, okay, which right here, which is in the center, and then John uh, says he sees four angels standing, which are the four cherubim, holding the four winds. The four winds are represented by the four wheels. So this is the Ezekiel throne of Ezekiel chapter 1. And in the sixth seal, all this is happening, which begins in verse 12 with the heavenly scroll being opened. Okay, John saw heaven being removed as a scroll. Okay, thus the scroll and the heavens that he sees is the book of life. And then what we see is the names written according to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, okay, ordered by their positions, okay, uh, reflecting the cardinal positions of lion, ox, man, eagle, and the 12 tribes, okay, around the throne. So this order, all right, this is in what we're describing here is Revelation chapter 6 and chapter 7. And it also happens, of course, in Revelation 14, where you have the Lamb on the throne and around him 144,000. So this is how you see the principal parallelisms of Revelation chapter 6 and 7, the throne of the Lamb, the four cherubim, the four winds, okay, in Revelation chapter 6 and 7, aligning with the 144,000 in chapter 7 and 144,000 in chapter 14, okay? That's just planting a seed. We'll get more into that in the future, okay? But we're just showing you how that is the heavenly scroll. Now, in this one, we're talking about the book of life as an intro and then the parallels in Revelation chapter 1 
and 20 and 22. Now, as I said, here are our notes. And our first parallel we're going to look at is the makarios in the Greek. And makarios means blessed. And what this is, is the book um, has a start and end, all right, that shows um, similar descriptions that paint a full picture of what each passage is talking about. So at the beginning of the book, Revelation 1, and at the end, Revelation 20 and 22, um, we have this parallel. And the first one we're going to look at is this word, blessed. Of course, in English, uh, it's blessed. In the Greek, it's makarios. Um, and it's the blessed kings and priests that will reign, okay, 1,000 years. So they seem to be corresponding with the Book of Life parallels, parallels of Revelation chapter 1. And if we read Revelation 1, we can see this, verse 3. Blessed is he that anagonosko, okay, uh, knows again, not just reads, but knows again the prophecy and keeps what's written, okay? And then he has made us kings and priests. Then Alpha and Omega says, what you see, write in a book, biblion in the Greek, or scroll. So what we're concluding is that because we have the blessed, all right, here, we have the prophecy, we have the kings and priests in the book, that this is also expressing the beginnings of the book of life in Revelation chapter 1. Uh, we find this uh, paralleled with Revelation chapter 20, when we see blessed once again. The blessed priesthood parallels with those that re rule and reign with Christ in the millennium in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. It says, blessed, same word, makarios, and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. They shall be priests and reign with Christ a thousand years. So once again, we see the alignment corresponding of the kings and priests, okay, that reign with Christ, and the, and the blessed, okay, the blessed priesthood, we could say, okay. And then uh, a few verses later, we see the book of life in Revelation 20, verse 11. Then the book of life is opened at the white throne. And I saw a great white throne. Now we're emphasizing the word throne here, okay, because the books are open in the throne settings. The judgment set, the books are open. I saw a great white throne, and the books were open, and another was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things written in the books according to their works. All right? So yes, many Christians think that they won't be judged according to their works, but that works against what Scripture says. But anyway, there we can see uh, something that's very important. Let's just put it, leave it all on the screen so you get this solid and that is that the uh, blessed, all right, the kings and priests and the book, all right, is showing us that the book of life is being expressed in Revelation 1, just as it is in Revelation 20, okay? And again, we see the books uh, being open, all right. Herein is this principle, all right, of the books being open before the throne for the judgment and the proceedings to take place. So as we said, this is going to happen throughout the book of Revelation. This is just when it begins. And John testifies from the throne, okay? Revelation 1, 4, to the seven uh, ecclesias, from him being who was, uh, who is coming. All right, I'm going to try and say this in Greek. O, um, on, kai, O N Kai O uh, Ira Kromenos. Okay, coming. So what I just read is he who is on, he who was N and Ir um is coming. And from the seven spirits before the throne. So John is testifying before the throne that the proceedings of the book of Revelation are beginning and that the book being described that we saw earlier is in fact the book of life. All right? Because once again, we see the throne expressed. All right? And he's, he's testifying from the throne. Then verse 3 says, 
the blessed ones that are associated with the book written. All right? The words of the prophecy blesses those that read the words of the prophecy and keep having been written. All right? So names are already written. Thus the book of life having instructions and names and is opened in the throne judgment times throughout the book of Revelation. Okay? So that's what's happening here is that yes, there's names already written from the foundation of the er world as we'll get into later. Um, what you see right, okay, in Greek, um, graphon, in a book. So John is to write the prophecy and the prophecy's already been written. Verse 19, write uh, graphon, those things which you have seen. Okay? Now, uh, another area of controversy that uh, in the Babylonian church is that your name cannot be removed from the book of life, but that's not true. We can see the, another parallelism between those that are blotted out from the book and those that will not take part and their part is taken from the book of life by applying the same principle of looking at the beginning of the book and the end of the book. So in the beginning of the book, remember he was testifying to the Ecclesias, um, and then the Ecclesias be begin in Revelation 2 and 3, and to the church at Sardis, Revelation 3, is seen in another beginning and ending of the parallel between uh, he that, uh, between Revelation chapter 3 and 22, which we can see. He that overcomes, I will not blot out his name from the book of life but I will testify his name before my father and the angels, okay? So this is uh, the first time the expression biblion and uh, zeos or zeo, life is used, okay? And then we can see those were blotted out, okay? Taken part from the book of life. And this parallels with Revelation 22, which also gives this warning. I, Jesus, have sent my angel, okay? Remember, he said, I, I will confess him, his name before my father and his angels. I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify to the Ecclesias. For I testify unto every man that hears the words of this prophecy of this book. Okay? So this is paralleling the angel, Christ testifying before the angel. All right? If any man take away from the words of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of those, uh, of, of the, the book of life. Okay? So... This is why we take prophecy very seriously. We don't just say what we think or form opinions. We don't want to make stake, a mistake. So if we do, names can be taken from the book of life, guys. Okay. So people don't take the book of Revelation seriously and they're going to have rude awakenings when the, uh, you know, the judgment is set and they have uh, taken things from the prophecy and their names are taken from the book of life. Okay. That's one of the reasons it can be blotted out. Of course, they can be blotted out by taking the mark of the beast. All right. If any man take away from the words of this prophecy, God shall take away his part in the book of life and out of the holy city of those having been written. So we, we conclude that it's not the having been written, but those. So there's people already been written in this book. Okay. So they'll be taken out of the book of life. They'll be taken out of the holy city, New Jerusalem, and they will uh, not partake with those that are written in the book. Okay, guys, there you can see the parallels in the book of Revelation with chapter 1, okay, showing us the book of life, showing us the blessed uh, priesthood um, associated with those that are written in the book, okay, the throne, okay, whenever the throne setting takes place, we have the books being open, okay, and we have the the those being removed from the book though their names are written from the foundation of the world okay we can see reasons and indications why names are removed okay so that is possible yes the book of revelation makes that clear in two places as multiple witnesses as we saw so we are getting into uh this series this is just the intro parallels showing you things that are not obvious that through parallel comparison beginning of the book the ending of the book we can see this all right 
and we'll get into more of the series as we go. We have other things where we'll get deeper into the studies, um, looking at Isaiah 4, 34, and you can get ahead in the series as we post the notes in a PDF file. You have the full series um, at the time of, of getting this, whether that be in the blog, we'll post this on the blog, or we'll post this on the website. Um, and we'll show you where on the website, once we can get this um, task accomplished, okay, where we get the notes PDF or notes in a blog, maybe both. We'll probably have both just to uh, get the content out to you at the time you're watching the video, okay? So guys, thanks for watching. Um, I do hope you enjoy the series. This is a continuation of the Angel of Covenant when he has the tablet in his right hand. Um, and as we, as we say, guys, we conclude each message. A voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants that fear his name, both small and great.